Welcome everybody, it's Unstoppable Stiletsy, and I'm here to do another Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition Age of Pirates Native Faction preview and review for you. So, the last time we analyzed the inventors, right? Armored trains, you know, submarines, zeppelins. So, this time, instead of doing that, we're going to be going over the uh, native faction that this mod is named after, the pirates, right? As in the actual pirates, there are indeed the other pirates, the Wakao, right, the East Asian pirates, but today we're going to be going over the pirate pirates, right? So, just so you're aware, there is um, five different types of pirate uh, factions or politicians you can pick from, depending on what map you're on. We're going to be starting with some of the more eastern options, I would say ones that appear more on the Australia and Oceania maps right now, and then we'll come back around to the ones that appear on the sort of like European as well as Caribbean maps, all right? So let's get started. This should be a pretty good analysis for you to understand what the pirates do and when you should probably try to utilize them. In general, in Age of Pirates, I always try to use my natives. It's generally going to always be a good idea to use them because, well, the units don't cost any population well, space, right? So armor. overall, it's a good Bacaro rule of thumb to always get them. So I decided to do post-imperial age to make this as fast as possible for you so we can get down to the nitty-gritty, get the TC, and I'm going to use some cheats to make it quicker as well. A whole lot of love. Also made the AI easy, so won't bother us as much, hopefully. Get that. So this is our um, pirate settlement here. You know, you got some pirates dueling each other. You got some sort of like log cabins. You got some sort of pirate towers and a pirate ship with some doubloons in it. Arr. So let's get this uh, pirate settlement now. All right, so before we get into the action, let's look at the basic technologies of the pirates and their roster. So for no matter what uh, pirate faction you go with here, in terms of picking your captain, you're going to have all these technologies always. Uh, this one here is called Gunpowder Barrels. So just look at this um, privateer here you start with on the uh, Tasmania map, which I decided to do. So if you look at this here basically you got a broadside attack right now once you research this that broadside attack will do 20 percent more damage so if you really want to do well in naval combat and since broadside attacks can sometimes decide how a naval battle does this technology is actually going to be really important for you to get so just keep that in mind like if you're doing water combat with another player on any of these Age of Pirate maps and you got the Pirate Natives, I would pick them up right away just to get this technology because it's going to make a huge difference, especially flying some of the bigger boats. And then from there, we got this technology called Gambling. It grants you a very small coin trickle of about, uh, what's it, 0 0.5 coin? So, not that big, you know. We know what capitalism gives us. It's like 2.5, right? Like, much bigger. So, this is like a really small coin trickle. It's not really going to be game-changing. I mean, it might look really big here because we have the speed always wins. Cheat on, so it's probably going to look astronomically bigger. But in a normal match... You know, you're not going to be able to spam a bunch of musketeers just getting this. It's merely just a small supplement to your economy. Over here is going to be a really important technology for water maps, which just about all the pirates are going to appear on, you know. I don't think pirates really appear on maps that don't have any water on them, since, well, they're the pirates, right? They go on their big pirate boat and they raid everybody else to take their treasure, basically. So you're not going to see pirates in some of the more inland Australia desert maps, for instance. So, again, back to the point, this is the technology called the piracy. And what it does is, it makes your hero and your ships better at fighting treasure guardians, with the much bigger emphasis on the ships, actually. So, you see all these um, treasures here, like these pirate privateers here? Once you get this, basically your privateers are gonna just be really good at, um, fighting these treasure guards so we'll pick that up right now as well as this just to show you combat wise how i can do against a privateer here should do fairly well 
Yep, look at all that damage. Look at all that sweet damage we do. And the broadside attack as well is just really good. And then we can grab our treasure safely there and do well. And then there's um, one more technology we can look at. It's called Secret Treasures. What it does is it reveals all the treasures on the map to you and your allies, and it grants you some XP as well. So let's get that now. Look at all the treasures we can see now. Not only does it help us see where the treasures are, it can scout for us a bit too sometimes. We can spot an enemy building doing this. So I would definitely recommend you get it, if possible. Yeah. And then from here, we have an upgrade for your privateers you always have access to called Black Sails, which makes your privateers 40% faster. So these pirate ships are going to be very maneuverable and help you to basically recover from attacks a lot quicker. So if you're like you have a dock here and you're being raided, these pirate boats are going to be really fast to get to that scene really quickly and help save the day for you. In terms of their native unit, they have the Buccaneer. Uh, the Buccaneer is a pretty interesting unit, actually. So what the Buccaneer does is it's actually heavy infantry, which is pretty surprising since statistically it's better against infantry, you know? Because look at this range attack of about 2x against heavy infantry. This is like a skirmisher, really. And then it's hand attack, you know, no anti-cab multipliers, just a really high amount of damage, basically, about 42 melee. So, yeah, it's pretty rare to see any malice against cab when you're heavy infantry in any sort of its stats, so that's a bit freaky, but, you know, just know that you would normally want to use these against infantry, and I think you'll be in pretty good shape. Now we can sort of go on to the, um, and here's the privateers, by the way, we can make some of those. Uh, here are the captains you get in some of the more eastern maps. So we got Black Jack Anderson, Davy Jones, and Grace O'Malley. Grace O'Malley also appears on the more western maps in like Europe and the Caribbean as well. So we'll do these ones first. Uh, Black Jack Anderson, uh, pirate steamship, increases privateer build limit. Special tech dry dock. So each of these captains comes with their own unique tech and their own unique pirate ship as well as an added bonus, too So get him Notice here how our build limit goes up to five right away so we can have even more pirate boats to use lots and lots of pirate action and Blackjack's flagship here is basically a Australian steamboat so it, it acts exactly like the steamboat from the United States of in it, you can basically use the Steamboat Full Steam Ahead ability and just go super fast and zip across the water with it like that. And be able to save the day wherever you have to. Also has a broadside attack you can use, and it can train Buccaneers as well. So you can deploy some forces with it as well on the ground if you need to in the form of these Buccaneers. In terms of the technology, you have a Dry Dock. Uh, dry Dock lets you construct a Dry Dock. This is normally a building you see, I think, in only the scenario editor, but he actually allows you to build it. This is the Dry Dock. It's a big, giant dock that can do some pretty big functions. So one of those functions is build the ships faster. And what it basically will allow you to do is be able to build these caravels, galleons, so forth, at a better work rate. And what we can actually do is, is um, delete some of these, undo the speed, always wins, I think, and just demonstrate how good they're going to be in terms of building rates. So here's a caravel. Notice how it comes out pretty fast here, thanks to this dry dock shipbuilding function being on. In addition, we can do the repair function, which will configure the dry dock to focus on repairing ships 300% faster. So, let's say this ship was really damaged, and we wanted to heal it up really quickly, you could just park it right over here and uh, heal it really quickly. We could actually try that right now. Let's get this thing battered up a bit and just show you how quick the healing is actually going to be for your ship. So we'll do that, just get into it. If the ship will actually attack me, that is, yeah. Alright, we're having a bit of a fight here, trying to get this treasure. We're pirates, we want treasure and doubloons. Arr, yeah. Alright, yep. 
up. So we have about almost a thousand damage, which is pretty serious. But if we go to our dry dock, let's see how quick it repairs. Look at how quick this repairs. This should be about repaired in a number of seconds, right? Well, definitely less than a minute. So, yeah, just definitely keep that in mind when you just get out of a fight with your ships. You can put this function on and just heal up all your boats just about. And then you have this last function here called Automatic Workshop. Configures the dry dock to maintain ships. Other ship training speed slows down by 50%. So what it ends up doing is, is it will basically auto-produce privateers for free. Yeah, that's why I deleted all those privateers to demonstrate this function to you. It will give you free privateers, which you know normally cost about 500 coin, which is a pretty expensive cost. So this can actually be a good way to save some of your coin to make more buccaneers, make artillery, whatever you need just about. So this is going to be a really good function for growing your navy quicker and cheaper, just about. And of course, we can always go back to mass production as well when we want to build our ships faster, just about. Here's nice. We got a free privateer. Wonderful. Go back to this. Build a galleon at this point. Wonderful. So there goes Black Jack Anderson. And now we will go over Davy Jones, I believe. So let's restart. Do the same process again. Game will load. Put our TC on the land in Tasmania. And then we will just capture that native site once again. Uh, Alright, it's loading. Wonderful. All right, there we go. Perfect. Get my TC over there. Get this. Town center right here. And we can scoop this up really quickly. Get this. Wait for the... Oh, can we capture this yet? I might have to move my village over here. All right. There we go. Perfect. All right. So now we're going to do Davy Jones. Davy Jones is a lot different than what you get with Blackjack Anderson. So he mostly focuses on his own ship and how powerful it is, but he can also give you a fixed gun as well. So let's get Davy Jones right now. Unfortunately, you don't get as much of a build limit of privateers with them, so do keep that in mind. But what you do get is the ability to get the Flying Dutchman. And this is indeed a very tanky ship with over 5,000 hit points, really good pierce armor, has a broadside attack. Now, what the ship does that most others can't is, it can actually train dolphins. Tame bottlenose dolphins that pose a threat to me any enemy unit that provokes it. So you know what dolphins are, right? Those wonderful cute creatures you see at SeaWorld, that you see people playing with in the water, right? They're very nice, very kind mammals. Well, let me tell you something. These are not very nice dolphins, because look at what happens to this boat here. Uh, this boat is gonna actually get eaten by these dolphins. Look at, look, they literally eat, ate a ship. These are like Jaws. These aren't even dolphins anymore. These should be like Jaws-level sharks. And yeah, you can just ride around the war with these and uh, attack boat after boat with them, too, which is really neat. And of course, since they're pets, they don't actually cost any population space, which just adds them to the power of your already growing navy. Yeah, just swim around. Let's do it again, just for fun. See if we can snag a bite on something. And yes, if you did notice, they do collect the treasures as well, which is really neat. They're very intelligent creatures, and they know exactly what to do with our treasures to put them in our inventory too, which is really neat. Grab that wood. Yeah, and you can just do this, you know. These, these dolphins are very solid overall. You don't even need the, uh, you don't even need the Flying Dutchman to help them out most of the time. Yeah. And this is the technology of Davy Jones is essentially the Tortuga fixed gun. You know what a fixed gun is, right? Playing Malta and from the campaign, so we'll just put this somewhere interesting. Maybe near the Aboriginal site, like, yeah, let's, let's protect the Aboriginals today. We want to make some natives or something, right? Yep, just capture that for fun. Yep, and I will put my fixed gun, like, over here somewhere. Yeah, like, right over here. Yeah, yeah. Got a big fixed gun. Wonderful. 
and as it works exactly the same way as fixed guns normally do. You can use the long range ability like that, and you of course have the same advantages and disadvantages of a fixed gun. And you can upgrade as well, like you normally can for the multisive, so do keep that in mind. It is a fully fledged working fixed gun that you can use. Just make sure it doesn't die, right? Because you don't get another one once this one perishes, unfortunately, right? And, yeah. Does this cost any population? No, this one actually doesn't cost any population at all. So this is like a really, a really sweet deal in terms of getting your offense and defense going, yeah. Yep, same weakness as the fixed gun for the multisive. Make sure no units get underneath your thing or else they won't actually be able to react to them like this. This little measly explore here is literally going to crush this fixed gun in probably like five minutes. So, yeah, sad. No more fixed gun. Now we're going to do Grace O'Malley, so let's restart. Once again, and then we will move on to some of the more Caribbean-oriented pirates and the ones you see in, like, European and North African maps. So we'll do this one more time here. Get our town center. We will deploy it right over in this spot. Um, there. All right. And get this right over here. Wonderful. There we go. Uh, speed. Always wins, or at least it wins most of the time, right? Remember the Taurus and the hare? Um, yeah, uh, give me some res too. A whole lot of love. Because love means food, money, and wood. Yes, literally just that. Uh, let's get... No, you go over here and you get that native site right away. So we gotta get Great Somali. Get that site. So this is Great Somali. Uh, she's... Her stuff trains very fast, trains Buccaneers, increases their build limit. So if you look here, the uh, Buccaneers normally have a build limit of 17. If you get Grace O'Malley, your build limit will go up to about 23. So this is one of the side perks we're going with Grace O'Malley, is just having more pirates to work with here. So even more doubloons and even more pirate R type stuff. Yeah. Uh, same normal limit of privateers and here's grace's flagship so what it does is is it's basically just like a um kind of what sort of looks like a galleon but really it's just a pretty solid ship named the black pearl you know from the pirates of the caribbean right has a broadside attack and it can train buccaneers too so it's got that advantage but a lot of the other pirate ships can also train units too so it's not that significant not that different, but it certainly is useful. Now, this is the big thing that um, Grace O'Malley comes with, is the Privateer Emissary. Ships a Corsair Emissary wagon, which becomes a Corsair Emissary, which gives you more Texan shipments. So, let's get this right over here. Looks like a pretty normal building, right? Sort of like a, almost like a weird sort of house with some green around it and stuff. So, what you can do with this pri privateer emissary is you can train your buccaneers at it and you can also train carronades or car carronades these are the same sort of cans you can make with the maori and wars of liberty so all they really are is basically almost like a flaming arrow in sort of a way that shoots cannonballs instead of you know flaming arrows really so they can be quite powerful and they're quite massable too since they only cost like two pop so you could run the mill with like a million of these boats it or a million of these cans, I should say, in a huge mass. And you do get these cool little shipments here, too, you can utilize. So, you get Privateer Expeditionary Company, you get Privateer Expeditionary Force, and then you got Privateer Expedition. So, let's say these guys aren't alive anymore. We can actually send these. This one will give you about eight Buccaneers. And it looks like you can keep sending these, too, which is pretty neat. Yeah, we keep sending these. Just about, and then after we do that, kill these off. Oh, yeah, so it re- Ooh, this is good. This is a really cool feature. So, basically, it leaves a UI when you reach the build limit. Ah, that's pretty nice, actually. Unfortunately, I need some more money, though. Let's get some more doubloons so we can do some pirate stuff. So, yep, this one will give you carronades and, um some of the uh, buccaneers so some of that yeah and now this one here the big one 
it basically gives you a privateer with 10 buccaneers in it. Yeah. So where is that boat? Right over here. Yep. So we'll do that. And can you make it again once you uh, lose all these guys? Let me see. Yes, you can actually. So yep. And note that this is limited by the build limit of the privateers as well. So do keep that in mind as well. Um, got that. And then there's the last one here. The Expeditionary Fleet. You can only send this one once. It gives you a pirate rig ship with six carronades in it. And this boat does let you train both the privateers and the carronades, just about. Consider it to be sort of like an... Statistically, it looks more like a galleon with more armor, really. So, about the 75% pierce armor we normally expect from a galleon. So, this one's going to be a little bit tankier against, like, musket shots and arrows, usually. So... Just keep that one in mind. We can, yep, train this, train that. Now, there's one more technology that's at this emissary. It's called um, the recruitment. Privateers can train uh, buccaneers, which they normally can't do. Like, if we look at a privateer here, yeah, you can't actually train anything from them. So that allows that. And it also decreases the buccaneers' costs and training time, so they'll come out quicker and for cheaper. Because if we look at the cost of a buccaneer real quickly, wherever they are, yep, they can get a little expensive because they're about over 100 coin. You know, not the cheapest thing in the world, so if you want to deal with that, just get this. And now they go down to a cheaper cost of 88 coin, which is not as bad, you know. And then, obviously, we can train them, too, from our privateers right on the coast here. Yeah. So there's the there's the more eastern pirate options. Now we can go on to a map like Pirates of the Caribbean and look at the more western-style pirates. You know, Europe, Nor Europe North Africa, the Americas, um, Caribbean, all that stuff. So we'll do that one right now. Go into a skirmish. We will select the Pirates of the Caribbean map. Just about, um, let's do that right about here. You have to go into custom maps, by the way, to find these Age of Pirate maps. You will not find them in the normal list, so don't, do not do that. Do not do that, because you know what happens is, I get all these comments on my videos, like, where do I find the maps? I did subscribe to the mod. No, you gotta go under custom maps. It's the only way it will work. I don't know why it's like that. I kind of wish it was part of the normal roster, but I guess that's the way how AW3's coding handles it, I guess. So take, as it, take it as it is, I guess. So here we got Pirates of the Caribbean. Totally not a Disney movie, but rather a cool Age of Empires 3 map that the Age of Pirates team put together for you. Has some Caribbean pirate natives on it. I think it's the first map I ever tried on this mod be just because of the name of it. Back in the day when you could do Age of the World civs on it, so yeah. Is indeed a really cool map. So we're going up against Sweden. Who cares? Um, let's get a whole lot of love. Speed always wins. Alright, so what we're going to have to do here actually is we're going to have to build a dock, right? And we're going to have to actually get a caravel to go across the water to see what we can do over there, right? Alright, let's sail in over there, just about. Yep. And let's find our pirate settlement here. It should be somewhere over here with these caribs. Somewhere over here should be the pirates. Um, arr, where are you pirates? I think they're down here. From Yep. Let's do that. Get over there, yep. The locals fight for me. Clearly, they recognize who is superior. Well, I mean, I don't I don't think IKEA furniture is superior exactly. You know, you kind of have to assemble the whole thing yourself. So I don't I don't think it's that that great actually. So that's at least my opinion. Here we have Edward Teach, whose ship is the Queen Anne's Revenge. His boat is actually really powerful, and the fleet grows stronger with every age up just about. So let's get him. And a special text is Treasure of Ponce de Leon. So here is uh, Blackbeard's ship, right here. Here we go. Uh, he's got a Greek fire attack, which makes it pretty powerful, actually. So let's look for something to attack. Uh, there's nothing to attack there. We'll look. Must be something to destroy. Uh, 
a, a great white shark. Yeah, great white shark. It's Jaws. Uh, oh no, it's Jaws. Um, let's uh, use the flamethrower attack. Ooh, look at that. We just cooked him. We turned him into into um, a nice fried fish dinner. Yeah, fish and chips. Fish and shark chips, I guess. But, and otherwise, it's just your normal uh, pirate ship, just about with some good armor, broadside attack, good HP. So yeah, it's that Greek fire attack that makes it really signature. And do keep in mind with uh, Blackbeard that he actually does increase the build limit of your privateers by one with each age up, starting in Industrial Age, Imperial Age. So. You can go from a build limit of 3 to 5, yeah. But now, this is a powerful option that you get with them. You get the treasure of Ponce de Leon, which gives you a treasure galleon. And this treasure galleon is a boat that, from the looks of it, it can actually... I don't think it can attack anything, right? It just, um... Nah, I don't think it can attack anything, nah. It's basically just this economic boat that just sails around and it trickles coin. So don't mind the 100 coin per second, that's just because of the cheat cone it's on, so I guess we can turn it off and say speed always wins, like that, and yeah, one coin per second. So it's, again, just like the gambling technology we get with the pirates here, it just adds a little bit of a coin trickle to make your eco just a little bit better. And in a sense, if you get both the treasure galleon and the gambling, the combined coin trickle's looking a bit nicer, you know, 1.5 coin per second instead of just 0 0.5, yeah. And from there, there is about one more, um, about one more pirate we're actually going to do now. And that would be Black Caesar. Just have to restart. Uh, let's get a dock. Uh, let me do this. Uh, a whole lot of love. Love for pirates and ahoy, matey. <laughs> get that. Alright, let's get a dock. Put it right here. There we go. Get a caravel. Sail it across the seven seas. And find our pirates. Yes. Yes, he was. He Yes, yes, right. That. And we will get Black Caesar right now. Uh, Neptune's galley. A uh, powerful oriental ship with a long range attack. So basically, what um, Black Caesar gives us is the Black Caesar's flagship. And the difference between his ship and the other ones is it actually is a hybrid between a normal naval ship and a monitor because it does have the long-range attack, including the long-range attack bombardment ability. So what you can do is, is basically scout around, look for some, you know, enemy fortifications or buildings or whatever. And as soon as you run into an enemy building, which I don't know if we'll see any for a while, you, you can basically just run this long-range bombardment on and you also have the broadside attack too, which is really neat. So, where is the dock? We'll just demonstrate here. Ooh, yeah! Oh, look! We got some, uh, stuff here. Let's bombard it. There we go. And just take off into the sunset before trouble comes. And this is gonna be Black Caesar's technology. It is called Barbary Revolution. It's actually a pretty good tech because it gives you about two galleys filled with Corsairs and it allows you to train Corsair natives as well. So, um, what's in these? So yeah, these are filled with, um, looks like a separate Corsair native than the one that you're able to train here. So yep, these are the Corsairs. And what you'll notice right away about these Corsairs is, seems to be a separate pro unit, I guess. They're, they are still heavy infantry, but they're more specialized against infantry now than cavalry. They no longer have an anti-cav multiplier, but they do have a really reasonable melee attack that's about on par with a halberdier, really, so keep that in mind. They can do pretty good at fighting muskets, skirms, that sort of thing, artillery. 
as long as they're not under too much fire, so you do need to keep that in mind. They do move fast, though. They have about 6.6 .6 speed, so don't don't count them out in terms of getting to where they need to. Absolutely not. So, yeah, let's keep that in mind. And do note as well, when you are upgrading your natives here, you can upgrade your buccaneers to veteran guard like most natives. It also affects these other pirate units as well, like the uh, corsairs, too, so... Do rest, be rest assured that um, you will be able to make your Corsairs stronger with each upgrade so they get stats of about this, really, so yeah. And one other thing to note as well about these gal these um, galleys that you get, number one, you can't train them again, so definitely don't lose them, right? Definitely don't lose these galleys because once you lose them, you can't get them back. And they can train your pirate units too, so they can make your buccaneers, and they make can make your corsairs as well. So, yep, these have been basically the uh, five different pirate captains you can get, depending on what map you're on. It's a pretty interesting faction, I think, and it's definitely the one that this mod is named after. So I would definitely consider again pirates on any sort of map that they appear on, because they're gonna number one boost your navy in terms of the number of ships and in the privateers and of course the captain's flagship depend on who the captain is but also just give you better broadside attacks overall and make your ships better at collecting treasures by being able to fight the treasure guardians too so yeah definitely get the pirates where they appear they're just a really good asset it's what just like about like any of the natives on these age of pirate maps they're all very powerful so if you don't like natives, don't don't just don't play Age of Pirates. Is basically what I'm saying because if you leave those native sites alone and somebody else gets them, it it's a done deal. You're done. So, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed this little presentation of mine. I definitely enjoyed giving it to you. Next, maybe we can do the Wakao pirates, the more East Asian ones, you know. And similarly to these pirates, they also have about five different options depending on where you are. Like, I think if you're closer to sort of China, Japan, Korea, that area, they'll be more Chinese-oriented. Chinese and then as you move out towards Polynesia, there's even a Wakao pirate who's Australian. So, yeah, very interesting stuff overall. And an Indone a, uh, Indonesian pirate as well, yeah. So, definitely looking forward to doing that one with you next time. So, I'll be signing off now from this one. See you on the next one.